All right, this is part two of uh, saving Betty the little 20 inch fixed wheel mower missing the discharge chute and uh, I've already changed the wheels to give it the a high lift in front and then the cut level that I want in the back which is about three inches because this is fixed wheel you can't just push a tab and adjust it um, what I'm working on right now is the carburetor and the tank and the, uh, the fuel situation. So let me show you where we are at that point. This is the uh, tank and carburetor that came off. Um, actually, the, the tank is one I had laying around because I want the other one to dry out. I cleaned the old gas out of it. Let me sit. There we go. And... Uh, and so it's, it's air drying right now. And this is another one I had laying around. It's the same type. It has the, uh, this is the vent tube for the tank. So you have a, in case this thing doesn't work right and, the, and it doesn't vent, this will vent the tank because there's a little tiny hole there and, and you will get fuel to come out. So you don't have to worry so much about the cap going bad. Um, <clears throat> The other issue with this carburetor is uh, somebody had gone into this, obviously they, uh, they adjusted that spring, which I mentioned earlier is not really uh, correct, but, but it, is, it is the original spring because I can tell by looking at that clip end on there that that, that should work. And, uh, it does appear to be working, so I'm not going to mess with that, even though I don't like the look of it. Um, I think it'll be okay. This has a slight bend in it. Let me see if I can straighten that a little bit. And uh, when I got this mower, he probably had enough, was having a hard time getting it to operate properly. So, often what people do is they'll bend this forward to increase the RPMs, and uh, that does work, but you know. When I get it fixed, I doubt I'll need that. So I've pretty much returned it to where the original position is. And uh, I cleaned the old gasoline out and uh, the carburetor was fairly clean inside. Some of the points up in here were uh, cluttered up with ethanol fuel. The thing I wanted you to see that I've changed, and I actually did a separate video about a year or two on this, this is the uh, the vent pin or apparatus that comes out the side of this carburetor. On the automatic uh, priming carburetors, there's an attachment that clips on here and then uh, will move the throttle that way when the, when the thermostat linkage pushes it over. Um, so there's always something in that hole where there should be, and in this case, it's this gray plug. Well, as soon as I saw that gray plug, I thought, well, I better check that because there won't be a hole in it. The gray ones are blank. In other words, there's no hole here for it to pull air in when you push the primer. Um, so I took this little guy out. It's easy to do. Just get you a pair of pliers. It just pops out and then pops back in and, and sort of clips in at the bottom. Um, so I took a very thin drill bit, that one right there, and I drilled out the center of this gray part so it will vent now because uh, you need to pull in air here. Uh, if you can see that or not, you need to pull in air. It's gonna pull in air through that gray pin that's just usually white. That's the tip off is that if this isn't white, you need to check it because somebody just put a blank in there at Briggs and I don't know why they do that because I've had them that just wouldn't prime at all with that blank in there. And if you drill it out or put an old white one in there, prime's fine. So um, when you push that primer bulb, um, it's going to draw in air. And it's got to come in from there. Um, so uh, this is all put back together. And the other thing I want to emphasize is that if you'll notice, unlike some of the other videos you see, they they'll pop off this carburetor separately and, uh, 
and then put pliers here and try and get the carb off. Just like on the, my previous video on the Quantum uh, engine, I talk, I take off this off as a unit. I find it's much easier to get, get this off of there like that and free that carburetor from that, uh, that Z angle there. Um, and also the fuel that's in the carburetor, this is true for the Quantum too. If you take it off as a unit and turn it this way, you're gonna get a lot of that fuel to drain back into the tank. So you have less mess to deal with. You don't, you don't have fuel leaking out all over your mower when you try and take it off here. You may, uh, you know, use something to pinch that off, but even with that, you often get a little bit of leakage and, and then the carburetor also will leak when you try and get it off if you turn it sideways or something like that. But if, if you just take this off as a unit, then go set this somewhere like in a block or an upright position. Just let that drain out for a little while before you take it off. So this has been cleaned and then reinstalled. And uh, so now we're gonna remount this. So it's easy the way I do it. I don't, I'm not trying to move the carburetor around or endangering breaking that piece of plastic. I just turn this thing at a right angle, the whole thing, the, the carburetor and the tank, and it just slips right on there, okay? And the tricky part is getting this this little plastic guy there to slip into that groove. And uh, so we're gonna get that going. Make sure I've got the, okay, I don't have the gasket in there yet. Okay, that's these two pieces, little rubber gasket. So that's gonna lay in there. The rubber goes in first. Okay, and that's gonna grab onto that intake manifold. Then the white plastic retainer clip goes on. You push that into the kind of clips. You may have heard that. So now it's ready to go. Uh, the other thing I wanted to caution you guys on is that my little bowl just slipped right on by putting these uh, by putting these little screws in. Um, I didn't have to struggle with it, and that's because I am very careful when I clean this with carb cleaner. This is another one. Um, not to just be liberally spray that carb cleaner around because what happens, it'll, it'll hit this rubber uh, gasket and then it swells. And then you can't get this thing back on there. I mean, it's a struggle if you can. And who, who needs that? So I'll try to avoid the carb spray on this bottom. If you can, just wipe it out. If you use it, try to keep it right in there and not don't just hit, don't hit the spray on that rubber gasket, okay? That'll create problems for you. So this one, I avoided that and it just slipped right in. Now, before I put this on, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little drop of oil right there on that intake manifold. Um, I'll show you that when we pick up the camera. Okay, so I've got, got the carb on the, on the Z, Z angle, and uh, I'm gonna just take a little drop of oil and drop it right there, and it'll kind of run down this side and that side, and it doesn't hurt anything, and it makes it easier to install this carburetor. So let's do that. Let me put this camera back in the holster here. Not sure why that's so why that blurry. Hang on a second. Get a little closer. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know what the. Hold on a second. <laughs> anyway, I hope that's not. I hope that's not the quality of the picture because it looks fuzzy to me. Anyway, we'll see. So. I'm gonna get a little WD-40 or a little, uh, let me get my little honey bear. I use him, hang on a second. That's an old, uh, that's an old honey container. It's got a little motor oil in it. And I'm gonna put a little drop right there. Let that run around the manifold. And this should go on a lot easier. So it's kind of a combination of both of them going on at the same time, but I'm going to get this one sort of in position. 
you got to be careful for that, that little air vent I talked about, the gray one. They're just popping out when you're trying to put this back in. Okay, so I got it right out of there. That didn't work. Okay, get the tank lined up. There we go. At least you get it started, okay? So now, let me show you this. So I've, I've got it started. Don't have it fully seated. Now I'm going to start this carburetor going on here. And... And again, you got to be careful of that because this can want to pop off if it hits those edges too much. I'm going to switch hands, use my right hand. And I'm pushing, 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 pushing. See that? Okay, right. now that carburetor is seated and this guy has not popped out. And now I can push this tank all the way down to where it is seated. Hmm. Right now, right now it is fighting me for some reason. Let me set. Let me set the camera down. There we go. see that or not but it's it's seated now so the carburetor's on the tank is on everything's intact see so it goes on as a unit and now I'm not left here trying to connect things and cramp spots with hose clamps and all that you avoid that by taking it off as a unit putting it back on as a unit okay that's working okay um, the guy that used to own this uh, they tried to work on or somebody did at some point because they were actually missing the two screws that mount the plate on here. So they were gone. And the screws that held the plate on that are the really important ones which attaches to this carburetor, one was correct and the other one was about a quarter of an inch long that he, I guess he found laying around somewhere and it, wouldn't, it wasn't even screwed in, it was just laying there. So he probably had an air leak here and uh, may have had old fuel problems uh, and that caused him to try and bump up the RPMs and it, you know, he probably was having all kinds of issues with it. Um, so now we've got this plate here to install. That's just gonna slip straight on. That's gonna fit inside that little rubber hose. Let's see if we can get that on there. This, you have to kind of come around the back of that I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see if I can move this camera. There we go. So, you know, you got to come around behind the back of this thing. Okay. And um, this is what's going to go here. So get, that, get that great case vent hose on there. And it is. And... Uh, Get this in position. Okay, so I can see the hole there. With that little quarter inch. He had one of these. The other one was missing. I'm get my magnet. So I get this started. Oh, it's not working. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't pop out when I pull on it. That means it's started. Let me get the other one started. Let me clean that off a little bit with a wire brush. It looks kind of kind of funky. Maybe help a little. All right, get this one lined up. Get it started. That one's being difficult, so I'm going to grab it with my thumb. Get my power wrench rotary drill which I use for that and I need where did you go where did you go well what I'll do is just use, use a good old fashioned hex nut wrench so I got a 5 sixteenths and a screwdriver type thing and I'm going to get this thing started that way 
get this one started. Okay, I'm not going to seat these. But really, what I'm most concerned about is seating this one and the one way down here, which seals this to that carburetor. That's the main seal you want. And if you're taking this thing apart, it's these short little screws here that attach to that. I'll show you what he had in there. He had this little tiny wood screw trying to hold that on. It didn't attach to anything. Okay, so let's see if I can get this thing going in there. And that's going to be a, uh, this is going to be a, uh, a uh, nine thirty second socket. Let me get that started. Get the other one started. And sometimes these don't line up real good. And you think, well, what's it going into? And what you have to do is kind of push the little carburetor up or down until those holes line up with these screws, but this is lining up real good. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug this down, really just, you know, hand tight here. Okay, so that one's almost there. You see it moved a little, so that's good. This is plastic, so you don't, plastic carburetor, you're screwing into the plastic carburetor, so don't strip it. Just nice and snug there. All right, now I'm gonna snug down the 5 sixteenths. And, uh, We'll go from there. I can go faster, but I don't see the socket that I have to do this for you. So I'm just doing it the old fashioned way. Almost done. Almost done. Now, you're not going to strip anything with these because you're going into metal. So. I'm not worried about that. I'm trying to get this thing in there. I'm almost there. There we go. That you can tighten down. That you can tighten down. Do not bear down on these, okay? And that holds the plate on there. Very delicate going into plastic. Okay, so I think we'll take a break and we'll come back to Saving Betty part number three. And we'll sign off for now. Please subscribe. Thank you.